At the end of last year, I gave out my dedicated server to a handful of strangers. And after over 4,000 hours, I was expecting something like this save to appear in front of my eyes, or maybe something else more along the lines of let's game it out. And just to be frank, this save is actually my first ever playthrough of Satisfactory. I know, it's a mess. But there were some pretty cool ideas that came from it. If you asked me what I was expecting from this experiment, well, I don't know what I would have said. Probably lots of pasta or open unfinished buildings. But I was so wrong. They created a masterpiece. And I'm truly mind blown at the beauty that they've managed to somehow mutually construct together. So today we're going to explore all of this and do a grand tour of what they've produced. But if you're wondering who it was that did this, it's our Patreons. So all of our Patreons have access to this lower tier save. In fact, there's a new one now going for update six but this is the previous one. So if you want to take part in that, make sure to join our Patreon. Also, if you want to create your own dedicated server, then make sure to check out our server host provider, which is low.ms. Today you can get 20% off your first dedicated server by using the link to it below and the code Total Eclipse at checkout. In doing so, you'll get a great low cost server provider, a boost to your FPS in game, and you'll also be supporting the channel. What are you waiting for? Sign up now. I will also mention before we go ahead that mods aren't currently available on dedicated servers. However, the moment that they are available, I will let you guys know. So make sure to subscribe for more information on that. So let's check it out. The first thing that you're going to notice getting into game is all of the signs. They've been very good in this server, uh, getting people to know what's uh, where. Now they actually have a storage area just over here. Get your stuff here. And they've also nicely labeled all of the hypertubes so that you know where you're going to. Most notably the arena, but we're going to get there in a moment. First, we need to get some stuff. The storage unit is right by the hub as we've uh, just shown you, but inside there are multiple floors of storage units which have everything. Except for the new ammo types of course because they came in update 6 which was when I pulled this save. And once you've got your stuff it's time to head to the arena or as it's put here, Total's Death Arena which is this beautifully crafted arena with all the different lights to try and make it difficult for you to hit your opponent. There's plenty of foliage. The number one rule is not to destroy the foliage if it can be helped here. So there's no explosives in this arena. And I must admit, we had a lot of fun with this when it was first built in stream. But if you did want to use bombs, then we had the other arena, the urban one. This one was all about using the levels and trying to destroy your opponent with Nobelisk. And aside from looking cool on the inside, they also looked pretty awesome from the outside too. I wonder if they're going to do any more arenas like this on the new server. As far as production goes, you're probably wondering about all of the machines along here. These aren't inside a building. Well, these were actually placed so that they produce one of everything, pretty much from the get-go, and then with it being a dedicated server running 24-7, this was feeding all of the items that they needed in order to get these other builds running. This building here was actually the first one that I saw inside the save. Uh, so this was developed and the idea was it was producing all of the iron resources for everyone to pick up and use in their builds. And the other build at the start was this one from Fireflesh. I like that Fireflesh added their name to it. In fact, I kind of hope that everyone puts their names on their builds as they're building them on the dedicated server currently so that we can actually give them a shout out. I know that there are a lot of people who helped out in the build and I'm reluctant to say any names because I don't want anyone to feel left out. One thing that I love about these dedicated servers is just the variety of architecture. I love this. In fact, I may even take inspiration from this for my current Let's Play. And I love that everyone's respectful enough to not destroy each other's builds, which happened when I opened the 
dedicated server to everyone right at the beginning. Of course, you can see above all of this, there is a train network that runs around the whole world. And don't worry, I haven't missed this. We're gonna come back to that later. I'm sure there are people in the comments going, ooh, what's that red building there? Please don't put that in the comments now. <laughs> Do it. As for power, the first thing that they did was work through coal to get to fuel as soon as possible, where they set up this massive fuel plant. Obviously, the fuel plant itself has seen many different renditions. This is currently using the blenders just over here. And all that fuel is funneling down to all of these generators. Speaking of fuel and fuel layouts, if you do want a guide on efficient fuel, then do check out my guide. I'll put a link to it in the top right hand corner now. It covers all of the fuel and alternate fuel layouts so that you can set something like this up straight away. And yes, there is some diluted package fuel being used here, and this is all being spent on the triple uh, plastic and rubber recipes. So the recycling uh, plastic and rubber for extra plastic and rubber. We should probably cover that in a video soon. All of these resources are then conveyed back to base, but not before going through an aluminium factory, which is making use of all of the bauxite at the top of the desert. As the rest of the builds are scattered around the world, we are going to use the train to get there. And you can see how all of the main players who were on often have their own train station so that they can call their train whenever they need to. And I was given a, a nice little one just because well, you know, it, it's, uh, well, it's me. <laughs> now, there really is so much that's going on this save, so I will make sure to put the save file up on satisfactorytips.com should you wish to check it out yourself. But we are going to look at a few more places, specifically the uranium cell production factory, the nuclear power plant, and the Titan Forest rockets factory. You may have already guessed it, but encompassing this factory, this is producing two rocket propulsion units, thermal propulsion units even, thermal propulsion rockets even, per minute, as well as four, I believe it's four, I think it's three actually, three turbo motors per minute. It is a pretty ginormous build and I can only wonder if it was just one person building this or several, but the teamwork that that would take to employ must be pretty incredible. There's so much going on here. In the first section of the build, they're producing modular engines. And one of the great things that I like about this build and its use of vertical layers is how all of the resources are labeled and then transported underneath the floor. They've also kindly added a hypertube because it's so long to help you on your journey. Though that shouldn't stop you from traveling in style. Speaking of which, we're already at the thermal propulsion rockets, which are produced in this multi-story mini factory. The build itself is producing five turbo motors per minute with a smart splitter being used to send the turbo motors that are needed to the thermal propulsion rocket manufacturers. And though they're only producing two thermal propulsion rockets per minute, on a dedicated server like this, it soon adds up. And speaking of adding up, on a dedicated server with lots of people playing the game, so does power consumption. So it makes it really important to upgrade your power supply as soon as available, which is where this build's coming in, which was, I think, built solely by Fireplus, but I might be mistaken. Uh, this is the uranium fuel cell production factory. It definitely has a nautical feel to the design. It looks a bit like a ship, but it is so beautifully crafted that I had to show this to you. This build makes use of the uranium resources at the top of the little mountain next to this and sends all of that from a 250% Mark III miner into the uranium cell production, which we just saw. And then all of that uranium ore is perfectly balanced between all of these manufacturers so that you're going to be receiving the least amount of radioactivity within the factory. And this is only helped by keeping the other three lines leading to the manufacturers fully saturated. And then from here, all of those uranium cells are sent up to the next floor where they're turned into those uranium fuel cells, which are then taken from this factory all the way across 
to their nuclear power plant setup, which you can find tucked behind in the Spire Coast. Of course, this was a pre-update 6 save, so there's a little bit of clipping. Of course, along with the uranium fuel cell plant being load balanced for the uranium um, ore, so is with the nuclear plants and the fuel cells. That way we're not going to have too much radiation in one spot. And underneath we have all of the water extractors producing the water that they need for the nuclear plants. But what about the waste I hear you say? Well, all of that is exported across to this setup over here. Now it is running and working efficiently. Unfortunately, it hasn't been um, nicely uh, tucked away inside a building. You can see exactly what's going on here with all of that waste being sunk and produced into the plutonium fuel cells and then sunk in the awesome sinks. I have so many ideas for using dedicated servers in the future, which I'm really excited about. We're going to get some um, groups involved potentially for a special um, like aesthetic build where it's going to be themed around certain stuff. So do make sure to subscribe for more. And if you do want your own dedicated server, remember to use my link to low.ms. Oh, and before I forget, what is this? Well, this is where they keep all of their trophies for all of those coupons that they've generated from the awesome sink. And yes, they managed to get them all. But guys, we are going to leave it there. Special thanks does go to all of the patrons who built this save, but also to all of our solo clips patrons, Cerebral Tag, James Owen and Fireflesh, as well as our Lunars, the Calamity, Dixie Chris, Ben and Star, and our Blood Moon of the Day, which today is Dashlom. Until next time, as always, ciao for now.